Before I get this video started, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Subaru of Corvallis for allowing me to come down and review the 2020 Subaru Outback Limited. If you're interested in the 2020 Subaru Outback, please be sure to hit them up and they'll be happy to get you into your next vehicle. What's going on? This is Big G from Jeep Riders and welcome to another episode of Testing Rides. Today, I'm going to test it out the 2020 Subaru Outback Limited. Welcome to the 2020 Subaru Outback. The Outback is now in its sixth generation, and of course, it has up, it has an updated powertrain. It has the updated new tech features and safety features, and it's more efficient and it's bigger. And Subaru and Subaru just continue to keep building on their hot selling Outback. For the 2020 model year, the Subaru Outback finally rides on the Subaru Global Platform. So the Subaru Global Platform is Subaru's platform that's basically used on every single Subaru model except the BRZ, of course, because that's the rear wheel drive sports car. But with that new platform, it benefits from being a lot more safe, a lot more, and just, and just a lot more solid feeling than it did before. And with the more solid, it makes a, a, better, a better experience when you're driving the vehicle. So, this is the 2020 Super Outback. This Outback and all Super Outbacks come standard with 2.5 liter boxer four cylinder, making 182 horsepower and 176 foot pounds of torque. So the new engine option for the Super Outback is the, is the 2.4 liter turbocharged motor. This is not the XT, but I will be doing an XT in the future. So the Super Outback is considered to be a mid-size SUV, mid-size mid crossover. So like cars like the Nissan Murano and the Ford Edge, but the Outback is kind of one of the smaller versions of that vehicle. And because it's smaller, it has kind of one of the lighter weights of the mid-size SUVs at 3,700 pounds. Because of that lightweight, the Subaru Outback is pretty dang efficient to be a full-time all-wheel drive SUV. So because it's lighter than a lot of its competitors, it does get 26 in the city and 33 out on the highway, which is pretty good for a lifted, basically, Subaru SUV here. Yes, the Subaru Outback used to be a wagon, but as it's starting to advance, the Subaru Outback is becoming more of an SUV than before. So the 2020 Subaru Outback starts at about $27,000. So that's not too bad considering this vehicle is pretty efficient for an SUV and it has a pretty good amount of cargo space and it's pretty big, it's pretty nice and roomy. But this is the 2020 Subaru Outback Limited. So I would consider the Limited to now be kind of a mid-range model because it's kind of right in the middle of the pricing of these SUVs now. So the base is starting at $27,000 and if you go up to a Touring XT, you're looking at pretty close to $50,000, which kind of is a lot for a Subaru Outback, but Again, it has a lot of stuff now. So, this is the 2020 Subaru Outback Limited, and this one is about $35,000, almost $36,000 because it has the up, it has the sunroof as an option, and it has the um, navigation and 11-point inch infotainment Starlink system there. So, this car is about $36,000, and honestly, I think that's a pretty good deal considering that this car is a pretty well-equipped, pretty well-built, looks pretty good too, especially kind of this white color. I like the white here, and. It has kind of everything that you would need, need or want in an SUV of this size and price range. So, let's go ahead and take a look around the SUV to kind of see what the outside looks like and let's go ahead and hop in and then we'll go off the road. Welcome to the walk around of the 2020 Subaru Outback. So let's go ahead and take a look around and kind of see the new stylistic changes of the Subaru Outback and then we're gonna go ahead and get inside and see what the inside's like. So, starting here in the front, the Super Outback is really different from the one that replaced because the headlights are pretty much the same as they were before. They just kind of moved the beams to the inside there and moved the turn signals to the outside. But now there's LED fog lights and I really like that they're smaller. The one thing that I've really not liked about the Outback for all the years is those big, huge round circle fog lights. But now these little, these square ones are more powerful and they look a lot sleeker now on this 2020 Subaru Outback. And of course, you walk on the side, it has the same body cladding, of course, that, you know, Subaru Outbacks have had for years now, which again, looks like, looks really nice. And what, before we talk about some of the smaller details, let's step back a little bit. 
So this Subaru Outback is a lot bigger than the last one. And every single year that they keep redesigning this car, they keep making it more and more SUV-like. Because before the Subaru Outback was just a lifted station wagon, but every single year it's becoming more and more SUV-like. Because honestly, it kind of looks like a Highlander. A Toyota, it's kind of shaped like a Toyota Highlander now, which is not a bad thing. But it's, but I think, and also I do think it looks pretty good. And I'm glad they're kind of making this more of a SUV than a wagon, even though this car, this car started out more as a wagon. So if you look down here, it has the Outback now down there in the plastic cladding, which looks pretty awesome. It kind of shows you what model that this vehicle is. And let's come around to the back. So the back of the Outback is, it looks pretty much the same as, it, it looks pretty similar to the way it did before. They just made the tail lights a little bit, little bit sleeker and they just kind of, and they opened up the, they opened up the rear opening a little bit more than they, than the previous model. So now you have like a wider opening when, when put loading stuff into the back, let's go ahead and open it up. So you got a little bit more wider of an opening. And there is lots and lots of cargo space back here. I'll put up an official number right in the middle of the screen there. So let's go ahead and put that shade back down. One thing I like for this year too, if we look up there at the power, the power lift gate buttons, you now can lock the Subaru Outback as you, before you close it. So if we hit this button here, now the lights flash that it's off. Come around to the other side here. It has kind of this kind of some pretty, you know, generic Subaru Subaru style wheels, which aren't aren't a big deal. I think they I think they look fine for what it is. But me personally, I'll put some meteor tires and some nicer looking wheels on here. Maybe some black ones, especially with this being a white car. And also, I talked about this a little bit in the Legacy Review. I'm not sure if this is coming out before the other one, but if we look here at the mirrors, if we look here at around the, around the side there, there's chrome trim all around the outside of the windows. And honestly, this is the only place I like chrome to be. And I think this looks pretty awesome, but it's nice that they kind of made this chrome go all the way across up to the mirrors. So kind of when you, from whatever angle you're looking at it, the chrome doesn't really stop. And I think that's a really cool design that's pretty a pretty cool design touch. I think they did a great job with that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of the 2020 Super Outback. So since this is since this is a new, newer Subaru and it's a higher model of the Subarus, it does have keyless access. So you gotta, all you gotta do is walk up to it, grab the door handle, and open the door up. And there's the inside of the 2020 Super Outback. So let's talk about a few things before I get in and really kind of get to the nuts and bolts. So I love the two-tone leather. I love the two-tone tan and black interior on this vehicle. So it just makes the interior just look so much higher quality. And I honestly, I think this is the way that you would do a light interior if, if you were to do one. And I like that on this one, it has contrast stitching, it has the black door panels here, but it has the tan contrast stitching just to make this interior look much better. And that carries over to the seats. And this got the thigh support in the higher model of the uh, the higher model of the Outback, just like the Super Ascent got last year. And then you got you got your stitching across the center console there, and all across the seats and all across the interior. I think that looks pretty awesome. There's some more stitching right there in the steering wheel. I think that looks pretty good, and also right there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get in. Ugh close the door and so we close the door Starlink kind of powers up and the gauge closer kind of powers up a little bit which again it's just kind of like standard stuff with cars now so you know then hopping in here this interior is way nicer than it, than it has been before like I love this big 11.6 inch screen the Starlink screen that looks pretty awesome and then it's just laid out really well so let's go ahead and fire the car up and kind of talk about and kind of look at how everything is when it's fired up. This screen is huge. It takes up basically the whole entire dash now. And this is how you control basic this is how you control everything in the car now. So we are on the home right now. You have your My Subaru information. You got apps. Let's click the apps, see what they have. It has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Travel Link with Sarah's Sirius Satellite Radio. So let's get car info. So this here kind of shows you, it's kind of like your off-road 
kind of like your off-road thing to like to see where your wheels are and kind of see if if your car if the vehicle's at any angle if you're doing some off-roading or anything like that i think that's really cool let's go to advanced setting so this is all of your safety systems now so let's take a look so as you can see right there you have there's all those lights there and that's basically what you see up up in front of you like a heads-up display that shows you that talks about all of your kind of safety stuff that's got that all the safety systems that's going on in the car so it has so if we look here it has lane keep assist it has the, the the it's kind of scan to make sure it's kind of it watches your eye to make sure you're paying attention. It has blind spot monitoring, rear brake assist, and rear automatic braking, and then front end collision assist. So depending on if you're going out of your lane, the the left light or the right light will blink blink if you're going out of your lane, and the the green light in the very middle flashes just to make sure you're still paying attention, which is pretty cool when you're using the kind of um kind of um, adaptive cruise control systems that steer and everything I think that's really cool so if we go to hit info down there it tells you what everything does which is really cool so if you want to read that you're gonna have to uh, you probably this is definitely something you look up online I, I'm probably not gonna use any whole bunch of time in the video looking looking through that actually I'm gonna I'm, honestly I might make a separate video about this so I'll make it, I'll probably make a separate video about just this infotainment and how all that stuff works. So here, this is all your different maintenance things. So this is engine oil and oil filters, tire rotation, maintenance schedule and all that stuff. So it tells you when all that stuff is due, which is pretty cool. So if we scroll over, you can add other shortcuts. Let's we'll see what those shortcuts can be. Radio, maps, apps, all that stuff. I think that's really cool. So let's go up. So, so a lot of Subarus used to have like a separate little screen up top, like the the old gener like the generation of the Subaru Legacy, the older generation of the Subaru Legacy and Outback had like a separate and the and actually the Impreza and the Forester has like this separate little screen up here, and in the Outback they just inc they just included everything here, so it shows you kind of throttle resp throttle position. So if I put my foot on there, and I'm revving it, it it shows me what it is, which is pretty cool. One core valves, of course, 50 degrees. And this is the X mode. So there should be a separate X mode button just for that you would use it when you're off-roading. When, when you're doing some light off-roading or mud or anything like that, that kind of changes the systems around so you can do that a lot better. And now there's you can change that up there in the little small menu, which is really cool. So Let's go ahead and hit the home hit hit the vehicle button and then you can adjust all that stuff there too and then all your driver assistance and the other stuff so i think that's really cool this star this new starlink system is really cool i think it looks good it works pretty decently quick i'm sure there's i'm sure there's glitches but but you know it's it it happens with kind of a new infotainment system setup so also down here this is the all the climate stuff here where you that we deal with all your temperature and your fan speed and all that stuff if you click your side you can slide it up you can slide it up and down it responds okay and then you turn your seat heater on I think that's really awesome so let's click this button over there and then this is your driver profile profile so basically like your memory your memory seed and all that type of stuff this is what it's all connected to so the infotainment system in here is really good. It looks really nice and it works decently quick, but there's probably some there there's probably going to be some updates that make sure this thing isn't crashing or freezing up on you too often. So moving over to the other side here, I like this little shelf there where you could put or where your passenger could put like a phone or some items or you could put some items or whatever. I think that's really cool. And the seats in here are really nice. They they look really nice. They're really comfortable and I love the tan and black interior with the contrast stitching and then of course up top you got your sunroof, sunroof controls and then as you can see let's open the sunroof and as you can see out the sunroof you have kind of your same Subaru um, rack system up top which is pretty cool all right A couple things the back seat is of course pretty comfortable it's a lot of room back there um because this is kind of the bigger of the this is the mid-size suv not the compact size suv so you have plenty of back seat space and then also you have plenty of cargo space with the, both the seats up and down because this is a super outback so instead of talking about that let's go ahead and get it out on the road to see how this thing drives all right welcome to the 2020 super outback let's go ahead and hop on the road to see how this thing drives 
So one thing to notice when you hop out on the road in the 2020 Super Outback is a simple fact that the Super Outback is a very comfortable vehicle. So as we're gonna as we're waiting here at the stoplight, let's quickly touch on a couple things. The Super Outback is a very roomy, very comfortable car. Like I have plenty of headroom, I have plenty of shoulder room, plenty of leg room, and there's a lot of back, there's a lot of space in the back seat. As you guys know, I'm over six feet tall and over 350 pounds, but yet I have tons and tons of room in this vehicle and i feel like honestly i have the seat back but honestly i feel like i bring the seat up a little bit closer but i just feel like being extra extra comfortable at this moment so you know the interior of the 2020 super outback is built really nice like there's not too many there's not too many big panel gaps or anything you, you can tell like the fit the, and the fit and finish of this vehicle is excellent and it's much improved over the previous model i thought the last one was pretty decent but again they just keep improving on what they're already doing very very well so you know as we're heading out as we're turning out onto the road here we step on the gas Honestly, this doesn't really have a whole lot of power, but that makes sense because this is the slower version of the car. And you know, this has 182 horsepower and at almost at, at, and at 3,700 and over 3,700 pounds. That is not a recipe for any type of fast acceleration. But if you don't care about the power, it's enough. Like it's enough to get out of it. It's, it's enough to kind of get this thing moving if you kind of keep your foot in it, but it is not the fast version of this car. If you want the fast version of this car, you have to go out and you have to buy the XT model of the Subaru Outback. And that one is the more impressive of the two in terms of its power delivery. So if you don't care about that, this is definitely enough uh, this is definitely enough for you. So how does the Subaru Outback drive? The, new, the 2020 Subaru Outback drives so nice. It's quiet, it's smooth. Every input that you do in the car is just easy. It's just a very easy, solid car to drive. With this car, with this being an SUV and sitting up a little bit higher, you got a pretty good commanding view out of all the windows and all the side windows and everything. So, you know, if you have to look over your shoulder to get over, you can look, but also you have the blind spot monitors and the, and the side mirrors. And I like that they're there and not in actually in the actual mirror because I feel like you, you can see this a little bit better than sometimes you can see that. You're paying a little bit more attention to that than that, which is pretty cool. So, you know, I've driven a lot of the cars in this class and like I've driven like, cause I just recently drove the Ford Edge and I've, drove, I've driven the Murano off camera a few times. I've driven the Hyundai Santa Fe, cars like that. Cause that's what this car competes with. This is the midsize SUV. So this is the Ford Edge, Honda Passport, you know, cars like that. Like cars that are not quite big and huge, but the cars that are not quite the seven, the seven slash eight seater family crossovers, but they're not small either. And that's kind of, and that's what the Super Outback is. It's, in, it's right, in, right in that class. It is honestly one of the smaller, of the, it's one of the smaller in the body um, than of, of one of those. But this is one of the better driving of the better driving models of the of the midsize crossover, like. You know, I just recently drove the Ford Edge. Ford Edge drove nice, but it did, honestly, it's not as smooth as this. It's not as quiet as this, and it doesn't. And it's not as comfortable to drive as this, because that's that was my one problem with that car. Is because it has that big panoramic sunroof, and the way the seats work, the, the way the seats are, the titanium. I sit up a little bit too high, but in this car, I sit nice and low. I feel like I'm sitting in the car, not on the car, and that's a big, big, big aspect of of, of my comfort in a car is whether I'm sitting in it, not on it. So as I'm cruising along here, all, really all I'm hearing is just like a little bit of wind because it's slightly windy out here. But besides that, this Outback is quiet and comfortable and relaxing to drive. Like I could definitely see myself doing many, many miles in this car. So the seats are so comfortable. Um, I had This is my first time actually driving one of the Subarus with, this, with the new thigh support. And I love when cars have the thigh support in, th thigh support in there because it just makes it feels like for me, like I have, I have kind of, I've, I have decently long legs, um, so like, it makes it feel like my legs are just way more supported with that extra thigh support there, and it just makes it for a way more comfortable experience when driving the car. So, what do I not like about the Super Outback? Honestly, nothing. I think this, the 2020 Super Outback is 
pretty similar. It's, it's pretty much the same as the last Outback that I replaced, but it's just it just added a new, some new modern updated features and styling, which again, um, you know, was was needed because this is a hot selling market in. This is a hot selling segment in the it, hot health. This is a hot selling segment, so automakers are, are under constant pressure to kind of keep keep this section of the crossover market fresh. So, like I think, believe the last Outback came in like came out in like 2016, and it ran for 2016 to no 2015. The last out the last generation Outback came out in 2015 and ran until 2019, and then you know I think that's a pretty quick life cycle. It had a mid cycle refresh about a year and a half in, and now you know we're again we're at the next generation of the Subaru Outback. And you know if you if you've driven Subaru Outbacks before, this is not going to be any different. This is not going to be this is not really going to be that drastic. This is not going to be that different than the one that was previously there. Only thing really different is the the bigger infotainment screen, but for the most part, this is the same old Subaru Outback as there was before. It's the same, great driving, really comfortable, really solid, just overall great vehicle to drive. And you know, if that's what you're looking for, you should definitely get the 2020 Super Outback, whether you're getting a Limited or the XT. So if you like this video, hit me with a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, keep riding me. Thanks for watching.